Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Welcome to this episode. Welcome back from our long holiday break. It was only two weeks off, but so much has happened in my life. I'm sure in yours as well. I feel like I always learn so many things over New Year's Eve because it's like the craziest time of the year. Um, I have a story for you. I'm going to share that in just a second. Um, But today I wanted to, first of all, welcome you if you are a new listener um, and welcome you back if you have listened before. Today we are talking about three goal setting tips. I've talked about goal setting in the last few episodes um, and if you are needing some place to write down your goals, I have the Bright Balloon Planner which is linked in the show notes and available on Amazon if you need just like a hard copy, something to guide you through your 2022 goal setting. But today I'm actually going to focus on three things you can actually do that take like no energy, no time, no brain power, And they are little tips to keep your goals on the front of your mind for the entire year. I feel like the biggest struggle when setting goals is remembering what they are. You set these goals and then six months from now, it's like, wait, what was I planning to do? And I kind of forgot and I got distracted. So today we're talking about three things you can do um, just to kind of remind yourself every single day what your goals are. So before we get into this episode, let's take a quick break and then I am going to share all about the most unbelievable thing that happened to me on this New Year's Eve. The number one question I receive is, where do I order my balloons? And that's why I'm excited to tell you about having a party wholesale. Not only do I want to order from great people who really know the balloon industry, but I want a nice selection of products and a really good website. They have it all. Not only is their website easy to use, but it also has updated quantities on all of the products. So you know that what you're ordering is what you're going to get. They have super fast shipping. And even though they're in New York and I'm in Wisconsin, I always get my orders in just a few days. So check out having a party wholesale in the show notes, wherever you're listening for your next order and make sure to tell them the Bright Balloon Podcast sent you. Okay, welcome back. I am going to share this because I feel like you listening are really the only people who are going to understand the panic and the coincidence that took place on New Year's Eve. If you follow me on Instagram, I shared a little bit about this, but not as candidly as I'm going to share today. Um, But I do a lot of balloon drops. So New Year's Eve is a really busy day for me. I do them all myself. Um, So there's not really a lot of time to make mistakes. There's not a lot of margin for errors. So when I get that phone call from a job that I've already set up, it is like the worst feeling in the world. Like my stomach drops because I know something is wrong and I know I'm going to have to figure out a solution. So this year... I see the phone call. It's an event planner for a job that I set up at 9 a.m. And now it's four o'clock in the afternoon. This is New Year's Eve. And it was for a wedding that I set up two balloon drops for, two small-ish balloon drops to go over their dance floor. So I answer the phone and the wedding planner says, the balloon drops aren't there. So at first I'm like, I don't understand. Did someone take them down? Did they like did someone steal them? Like I, like I, I couldn't process what was happening. So then she asked like, well, where did you put them? And again, I'm trying to figure out what's happening here because it's like, well, I put them on the ceiling in the middle of the dance floor at the wedding reception. And then in my head, I'm thinking like, could I have put them in the wrong room? And at the same time, she says, could you have put them in the wrong room? But what is so strange is that I've been to this venue a lot. I've been there several times and there's two rooms. There's a room on the left and there's a room on the right. And I even asked the bride before. I said, it's the room on the right, correct? And she confirmed. So then when I got there, I look, the room on the left is empty. There's nothing happening in there. And the room on the right is set up for a wedding. Um, I check the floor plan and it, it all matches. There's the head table. There's the dance floor. There's where the balloon drops go. I look at the sign. It says the butler wedding. The colors are the same. It was like a dark purple with um, 
you know, black and gold and New Year's Eve colors, like everything makes sense. But then just to double check, I asked the mother of the bride, this is, this is the dance floor, right? This is where the balloon drops go. And she actually took the time to be like, hmm, maybe over there because like I don't know if they want them hanging over the the head table maybe maybe closer to like the center of the dance floor so we have this whole conversation I do the balloon drops I hang them I leave I go on with my day no big deal so fast forward to when I'm on the phone with this event planner and as we're trying to figure out what's going on she's walking around the venue and she says oh I found them I found the balloon drops they're in the wrong room And I'm so confused still because it's like, well, no, it was the butler wedding and it was the right colors and it was the right floor plan. I even asked the mother of the bride and she tells me that in that same venue, there's two butler weddings on New Year's Eve and they both have the same floor plan and they both have the same colors. And as for the mother of the bride, I literally have no idea. Like, I don't know why she didn't just say like, we didn't order those or I have no idea, but whatever reason this, this woman just agreed to put the balloon drops where I suggested, not thinking like, oh, these actually aren't for us. So I had an hour and a half gap in my schedule. It was kind of towards the end. Um, Another layer of panic was that the room where the balloons were actually set up for the wrong wedding, that wedding was about to start. So once the wedding started, I couldn't like go in there and set up my ladder in the middle of their reception and steal the balloon drops like a Grinch. So I'm like speeding there. Long story short, I got there, I got them down and then I moved them and then I got them back up. But it was the most unbelievable thing I've ever experienced that there would be two weddings in the same venue with the same last name, with the same colors on the same date. And that nobody would think to mention that. Like, hey, just a heads up, this might be confusing. So I'm trying to take away a lesson from this, but this is honestly one of those things where I'm just like, I literally don't know how it could have been prevented. Like, sure, I could have quadruple checked, but man, I thought I covered my bases and I lucked out that I had time in my schedule. Um, The one thing that I could have done was make extra balloon drops because when I got there, the bride would have bought the ones that were that were accidentally hung in her venue. She actually liked them and wished they could stay, but I was like, I don't have time to make another one and this bride paid for them, so I have to move them. So, you know, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. but um, holy cow, I hope your New Year's Eve was much less eventful than mine. Overall, mine was really easy and um, pretty, pretty bearable this year. I had nine jobs spread out over three days and I was able to do them all myself. Um, Again, the balloon drops, I had pretty low-ish ceilings, so I'm able to get those up alone. Uh, And other than this little snafu, things went really well, but oh my gosh, it's like something always, always goes wrong. Um, So anyway, I just wanted to share that uh, nightmare story. I, I, in this case, I feel like anyone I have told this story to understands that it was a nightmare, but only balloon people on New Year's Eve really understand the level of panic <laughs> that ensued. So I'm so lucky that that everything worked out and uh, everyone was happy at the end of the day. Um, all right, looking forward to 2022. Let's leave 2021 behind us. Um, I wanted to take time today to chat about not only um, goal setting, but like what to actually do so that you remember your goals. And writing them down is important. I have two episodes before this about writing them down and and limiting how many goals you set. And you can go back and listen to those goal setting episodes. But now that the new year is here, hopefully you have your goals. And today I'm going to make three suggestions of where to record those so you remember what they are. So the first place where you can put these is in the little window of your wallet where your ID normally goes. This was a tip that I am taking from Denise Duffield Thomas. Learn that name, friends, because I have become her biggest fan. Um, She is a business, lifestyle, manifesting, all sorts of things coach. She has books. And I went on a podcast binge of hers, and I read all of her books over this little winter break. So um, a lot of the tips you'll be hearing are from her. I just, I, I love everything she does. So if you haven't heard of Denise Duffield Thomas, she's amazing. Um, I'll be referencing her a lot this year. Um, but anyway, this tip, this tip was something she recommended. In your little ID holder slot in your wallet, stick a little post-it note in there and write down your three or four goals for 
the year. That way, every time you open your wallet, you'll see what they are. And maybe you can actually kind of cross them off so you're actually seeing your progress as well. But that way, every time you go to pull out your debit card, every time you go and you know look for your ID, that little window is full of the goals that you need to remind yourself of. I accomplished all of my goals last year and they were really big. They were big, big goals last year. I hit a huge sales number for me personally. Um, I paid off my home, I bought a van, and I moved into a house with a shop attached to it. Those are four, in my mind, like astronomical goals. Things that I didn't know that I could actually accomplish in a year. And I really think that I hit them because I wrote them down and I thought about them all the time. I rem- I didn't get distracted because there's always a million things that I want to do. I could get distracted, you know, so easily and move on to like 10 more goals by the end of the day. But because I had those four big goals written down and I was constantly reminding myself what they were, I stayed really focused last year and I accomplished all of them. And I'm sure that you can too, um, depending on whatever your goals that you've set for yourself. Okay, the second place where you can write down your goals. So number one was your little wallet window. The second thing is going to be on your phone or computer or both screensaver. So, um, you know, a lot of us have photos of like our kids or, you know, at my day job, I just have like the default screensaver of some pretty island that I don't even know where it is. It just it just came with the computer. I never even thought to reset it. But you can go in if you do any sort of like vision board or, you know, pull an image from Pinterest or you can do you know, something on Canva and actually make like a word art document. You can write down your goals or you can have pictures of your goals or, you know, whatever you are trying to work towards this year. Maybe it's going to be a van. Maybe it's going to be a new home. Maybe, you know, whatever your goal is, create something visual and save that as your screensaver at your computer and on your phone, your wallpaper. That way, every time you pick up your phone to check the time, you're also seeing your goals. Every time you sit down at your desk and, you know, maybe you're not like me. I actually don't mind my day job. If you hate your day job and you're stuck at an awful, awful desk, a really good motivation is to remind yourself every single moment when you're at that computer, why you want to leave and what you want to be doing instead. So set that screensaver. So every time you set that, sit down in the morning or when you get back from lunch, it's not a total bummer. It is, um, like encouragement and a reminder of why you're there and what you're working towards. All right, I have one more tip to share. It's super simple, like the first two, but we're first going to take a quick break. Ballooncoach.com has been a sponsor of The Bright Balloon since pretty much day one, because like this podcast, Balloon Coach focuses on growing your balloon business. I personally love Balloon Boss Mastermind because it is a group that constantly challenges me to grow my business, think about things in new ways, and I'm able to ask questions to other balloon business owners who usually have more experience than I do. From monthly webinars to in-person events and downloadable resources, ballooncoach.com really has it all. So check out the link in the show notes wherever you're listening to learn more about ballooncoach.com. Okay, welcome back from that quick break. And also, I just wanted to put in here how excited I am that we have new sponsors on the podcast. Um, It means a lot, not only that listeners support me, but the fact that other businesses are starting to support the show and be really excited about... um, you know, how, how this is growing and that people are listening and tuning in. I just, it means so much to me. So the, the, one of the best ways that you can support this show is to support the sponsors. So if you hear something that interests you, or you, you hear an ad for something that, um, you know, you think your business needs, it's really, really helpful. If you just click over and check out, um, you know, either that those distributors or those programs or whatever the sponsorship is and mention that you heard about it on the bright balloon podcast. All right, the final tip. This is another Denise Duffield Thomas tip. And again, something that takes literally no time to implement. Change your passwords to your goals. So every time you log in on your computer, instead of it being like Z5A24 or like your home address, whatever your dumb password is, change it to your goal. So maybe that's transit van. Maybe that is $100,000. And that's your sales number. Even on your phone, your little, your pin number, it could be your sales goal number. So that every single day you are focusing on 
those really important goals. You are keeping them in the front of your mind so that subconsciously you're reminding yourself what you're even doing. Because again, like I mentioned, it's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to go in every single direction and get distracted from your own goals. But if you are constantly reminding yourself what you are working on and something like a sales number, um, I think is, is a really good goal, especially when you start getting distracted by things that don't generate money. Sometimes we can go off in all these different directions and realize like none of those were money making opportunities. That styled shoot didn't bring me any money. That trade for advertising didn't actually result in any money. So if you have a really big sales goal and you are typing it in every single day and you know, you want to hit that number for me personally, that keeps me really concentrated on money making tasks. Um, and it makes all of the other stuff that are, you know, just just a little bit more fun. It makes it less tempting. So definitely go in, change your passwords. And again, these could, they don't have to be sales goals. They don't have to be, you know, numbers. They can be, um, you know, change it to freedom, change it to full-time balloons, change it to hiring your first staff member. Um, you know, that's going to be a long password, but, (laughs) but maybe it's, um, maybe your password is going to be changed to first employee or something like that. You just want it so that you are typing it out every single day. So if somebody asks you, what's your goal this year? You don't even have to think about it. You can rattle off all three or four of them in two seconds because you know exactly what they are. That's why like this is the first year I've ever been able to actually recount what my goals were for last year. And it's because I kept close track of them and because I accomplished them. Never in my life have I been able to say like, oh, my goals for you know 2018 were this, 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 and this. But because last year I was so focused on my goals and because I accomplished them, I can tell you, exactly what they were and and exactly how I met them and when actually I remember the days when I got my van when I paid off my home when you know all of those big big things took place um, and on that thought I have one final thought that I am going to mention um, so if you are not into goal setting like my husband personally, he is not a goal setter. He doesn't like resolutions he doesn't like setting goals he doesn't even like like big mission statements that's just like not not something that motivates him um, But I heard another podcast episode and it was an interesting way to think about goal setting. It was a new way and and it really resonated with me. So I thought I would share it. Unfortunately, I can't even quote who this person was or what the episode was. It was kind of on in the background. Um, But to paraphrase, the guest suggested that instead of setting resolutions or goals, because a lot of times those are set out of obligation, things like I should lose weight or, you know, I should make a budget, things that like we don't really want to do, but feel like we should do. They suggested following things that spark interest and trying to accomplish like one big thing. So like, this is the year I'm going to and then fill in the blank. Because when you're going after things that you actually kind of want to do, you're way more likely to accomplish them and to stick to them. So like, you know, for me, this is the year I am going to launch my solopreneur course. Um, so I haven't even started this yet. This is something that I just kind of been thinking about for the last couple months here. Um, I am going to be launching a course all about streamlining and automation and making the most of your time when you are a very small business or a one person balloon business. So that's what I'm going to focus my attention on this year. And I have goals surrounding that. I have sales goals surrounding that, but instead of focusing on a bunch of little things that I feel like I should be doing, I'm instead focusing on one thing that I'm actually really excited to do. So maybe your goal is going to be like, this is the year I'm going to go to my first balloon convention, or this is the year I'm going to travel to another country. It doesn't even have to be business related. Maybe this is the year I'm going to buy my van. I use that one all the time because I know that's a goal for everybody. When we focus on those big things, they're easier to remember, they're more motivating, and they're a little bit less analytical than like a written goal, I guess. And again, this this isn't even my own concept. This is just something that I heard on another podcast and I thought it was an interesting take on goal setting. So if the whole like listing out your four goals thing isn't, isn't for you, if you need to focus on one big thing, that's another way to think about it. And I, I found that really interesting and I could totally see that being motivating. So um, thank you for joining me again this week. I hope everyone had a happy holiday and a safe start to 2020. I am really, really excited about this 
here. Um, some exciting upcoming stuff. I'm going to float as a vendor. Um, I, I bit the bullet and I bought a vendor booth. So the bright balloon will be there. I'll be doing some live podcasting. I'll have planners for sale. If you are joining, um, float in Chicago and that is at the end of January. I believe there are still tickets available if you want to attend your first balloon convention this year, or if you've been thinking about going to a convention. So, um, if you are going to float, please stop by, please say hello. And also all of the sponsors of the bright balloon are also going to have vendor booths in the showroom. So make sure to stop by and say thank you and hello to them as well. All right. I will see you next week. That wraps up this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I tried to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. I'll talk to you next time. For more information about any of the resources or courses mentioned in today's show, please head to thebrightballoon.com or check the show notes wherever you're listening.